The future belongs to those who dare, those who will do extra. Hi, I'm Mark Crosscree. Welcome to Business Dive Extra, the program that looks beyond dollars and cents to the movers and shakers in business and the capital markets. Our guest today has one of the greatest demands in the market. He started off with St. Andrew Investments Limited in 1991, which distributed lubricants in the automotive industry. With the increase in demand of motor vehicle imports, he ventured into car imports and the market of motor vehicle sales in 1994. He holds a Bachelor of Science in Physics and Electronics from UWE and an MBA from Nova Southeastern University. He has served in various capacities at Cable and Wireless and NCR Jamaica before completely honing his entrepreneurial skills. He also served as a president of the Jamaica Used Car Dealers Association and chairman of the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers Region 3. And joining us today is Andrew Jackson, Managing Director of Jetcon Corporation Limited. Andrew, welcome to Business Time Extra. It's great Thank having you. you. Thank yeah? you. Thank you so very much. No, you're welcome. <laughs> so, you know, Andrew, we've never had a used car businessman, entrepreneur, on Business Direct Show, this is the first of its kind. Great and good, good to be first. I like being first. Yeah, and you know we've been up and running three years or so. I mean, is it? Could we go as far as saying you're one of the pioneers, you know, of the used car trade in Jamaica, based on when you started in the '90s? I, I wouldn't say I'm one of the pioneers, but certainly one of the early ones. Okay. Um, you know, we, we 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 got off the ground just about the time when the when the government had, you know, liberalized the whole importation of of motor cars. It was a very exciting time. It was a time when the demand for cars were extremely high mm -hmm. because of years of, of um, you know, restrictions. And, and, you know, things were really, really busy at the time. Yeah. Very busy. Is it, were, during those times, were you like part of a lobby group? Did you kind of help to lobby the liberalization or you did, did you just kind of jump on a bandwagon at a time, see the opportunity and say, let me get into this business? I, I was part of the Jamaica Used Car Dealers Association, okay. which, which actually lobbied the government to, to liberalize the market and actually assisted in, in, in honing the rules. Kind of the policy. The, the policies the rules. at the time. You know, it, it was actually, it was being led by Daryl Vaz, the, the now minister. Okay, okay. okay. Right? Um, you know, again, you know, that, was, that was some pretty exciting times. So looking back, back at it, it had its own, like, it had its whole legislation and everything in the early 90s? Um, d definitely. As, as I said, you know, um, you know, pre-1994, you know, motor vehicle imports was highly, highly restricted. In fact, I think it was the government who did up most of the importation. Individuals could import, but, you know, there were, there were, a, lot of, there were a lot of restrictions. Right. Um, so, you know, there, were, there, there, there was a market for pre-owned cars out of Japan, you know, right and drive cars, you know, the, type, the kind of cars that Jamaicans like, you know, the Corollas, the, the Camrys and that sort of thing. And, and um, initially people were importing them individually. So mm -hmm. we actually started out assisting persons to, to import these cars individually, uh, as individuals. And so that's how it kind of started. It was like an individual trader, you kind right, of come in, you right. spec it for and, them. Right. And, and we it's were like, like an individual we were like brokers. deal. We were like brokers, brokers. In, in between. Right, but then that changed, and and, and in in ninety four companies were allowed to 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 um, apply for a, a, a license to import cars to, to retail. So so then you start to become like a supermarket. You build the inventory. That's you correct. come on a lot. So so yes. that was a game changer around ninety four. Yes, around about ninety four. And so and so Andrew, what 995 was ninety five actually? Right. Mm -hmm. So what was the light bulb for you though? So you start with lubricants for a couple mm -hmm. of years, mm -hmm. and was it just the market opportunity, or you know where did the passion come from? Where did you wake up one morning, whether it was you and your family, and say, I'm going to take this entrepreneurial risk and, you know, make Jetcon this kind of, you know, permanent used car dealer? Well, interestingly enough, um, in, in 1994, I had just completed my MBA. Okay. And, you know, it was a, it was a lot of hard work. And when, when we finished that program, it was like, wow, what am I going to do with all this time? And uh, two of us, actually, who did the program said, hey, let's... Let's go. Um, let's go into the car business. In fact, we had we had already imported a, 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 a couple of cars for ourselves and family, 
and we say, hey, let's start this business. And we, we got it started. So it started off as a partnership, like it a, a joint a venture? It started off as a partnership. Okay. Is, is that person or no. still a partner with you? No. no. Okay, you bought him out. I bought him out. Okay, <laughs> well, good, good for you. And, yeah. and you know, it's, it's interesting. You know, it's, a, it's, it's a piece of advice I give to most um, persons who are starting business. Um, be very, one has to be very careful of, of partnerships when starting a business. Um, you know, you know, two people may be good friends and good people, but but for some strange reason, it's it's partnerships in business tend to go sour after a while. It goes sour if the business go do well. It goes sour if the business do badly. Yeah, right? in, in, you know, in, in hindsight, it's a great story. A lot of persons don't share kind of the whole history and the story. Mm -hmm. In in those days, or like say in 1995, did you actually like have a shareholder agreement, or did you have anything documented, or was it just like a handshake where business oh, partners? Oh no, we had we had, we had, a, we, had, a, we, had a, we had we had an agreement. As far back as then, so you had as some type of agreement. Then, yes. In in those days, what did they call it? Was it like a memorandum of agreement, or was it just uh, still called uh, a shareholder uh, agreement? I, 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 don't, I don't remember. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I don't remember. But, but 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 you know, I, I owned a certain number of shares. He owned a certain number of shares. Right. Um, but 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 in terms of uh, agreement, I mean, you mean an agreement if, if business fails or so, what happens? Or just whatever you know how, how the shareholder cap table was. No, 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 we, we, no, no. Sorry, we didn't have anything like that. No. Okay. No, no fair, fair enough. And today, you know, JetCon, you went public in 2016. 2016. You know, JMB Group took you public, or right. JMB Securities. Yeah, correct. You know, are you the majority shareholder today, or are you the most uh, um, most voting Andrew shares? Invest, Saint, Saint Andrew Investments is still the majority um, shareholder. I think we own about 60 percent. Okay, of, of, of JetCon. Of JetCon, yes. And are you in control of St. Andrew Investments or is yes. it a pro rata situation? No, no, I, I'm in control. All right, so you're yeah. the man. I'm, I'm the man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Do, I mean, we, we, you know, around, say, Kingston and St. Andrew, around Jamaica, mm -hmm. do persons refer to you as like the used car boss because JetCon is such a you know, prominent brand out there? Not, not really, but 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 I can tell you, we you know, we have a lot of loyal customers. We have a, you do. It, you know, again, interesting, you know, we have a lot of, second generation customers. So, you know, we have been in business for, for roughly 30 so, years. So you have seen that? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. We, we, a parent there and are, a child. There are kids who followed their parents really? to purchase a car back in 1995 who are, the kids are buying the cars now. And do you see that especially with their first car? Like the first yes, car, they come yes, to the jet yes, lot. Yes, yes, we do. Yes. Okay. Like a, a lot of our customers are first time buyers. And, you know, Andrew, speaking for, you know, like, like let's say your board of directors mm -hmm. or, or your family, why do you think JetCon has lasted so long? I mean, there's so many used car dealers that you've seen, you know, pop up. They do so well, um, big branding, and then all of a sudden you don't hear from them anymore. But but JetCon has really with, withstood the test of time. Um, what, what do you attribute that to? And you are the only publicly traded used car company, right? Or for the matter, the only publicly traded car company in Jamaica. <laughs> well, well said. Yeah. Uh, but f first of all, we have a we have a we have a passion for cars. Um, my entire family is involved in, in, in the business. And what that has done is, you know, when we have, you know, when the hard times come around, and it does come around, um, it's nothing like having family in, in the business who will stick, you know, will stick it out through thick and thin. Um, but, but, but apart from that, we have a passion for cars. The other thing is that, you know, we're... And, we're, and when you we're, say that, is it like fast cars? You know, when persons say oh. passion for cars, <laughs> like, you know, you listen to like a Jay Leno or somebody, it's like, you know, I really love a Lamborghini, let, I love a let, Ferrari. Let, let me put it to you this way. Or is it just way. cars in general? Let, let me put it to you this way. We're, we're not only involved in selling of cars. We're involved in racing cars. We're oh, involved really? in building cars. We are, fact, we are involved in repairing cars. We, okay. You know, we do, you know, and, 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 you know, we have been involved in motor racing in a very serious way over the years. I didn't know that. The, the camera, cameraman here will tell you. Okay, so, so you, you sponsor racing or you directly, sponsor, are you a race car driver yourself? We sponsor racing, we yeah. race, I mean, my, all my kids race cars. Okay, I didn't know that, okay. Uh, and from they, were, from they were very young, started out in go-kart racing. Yes. All the way up to, um, to, to car racing. So there's a passion throughout the company. It's, it, it, there's a passion for and racing. And I guess, and the JetCon brand is, is the JetCon brand is on these cars at the events? Almost oh, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> Right. In, in addition to that, you know, I, I believe we we um we we run a very good shop, mm -hmm. um, which which is the reason why we're able to 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 be listed on the stock exchange. Uh, we, you know, we we run our business in a in a you know very 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 tightly from even pre listing. 
you know, our, our accounting system, our, our, you know, just the way we do just about everything. Yes. Uh, you know, has been, you know, to some of the highest um, standards. A very, a very efficiently run company. Yes. All right, we're yes. going to come back to that. Thanks, Andrew. Mm -hmm. We take our first break on Business Dive Extra. We'll hear all about JetCon when we return. Welcome back to Business Dive Extra. Jetcon Corporation Limited started in 1991 with the selling of QMI PTFE engine treatments. Since then, the company has introduced other car care products to the market. Jetcon became one of the first to be registered by the government as a certified auto dealer in 1995. It is a one-stop shop for all services, including car sales and services. Jetcon Corporation Limited successfully listed on the JSC Junior Market in March of 2016. The company is one of the leading dealers with highly trained mechanics and technicians with facilities that are among the best in industry. Here to tell us all about the company is Andrew Jackson, Managing Director of Jetcon Corporation Limited. Andrew, welcome back to Business Life Extra. Hey, thank you again. Yeah, <laughs> it's great having you. You know, Andrew, what's, what's like the staff count like? You know, part-time, full-time, what's the head count of Jetcon? Right, right now we are, we're up to about 35, which is, okay. which, is, which is close to the highest we have ever been. Really? Okay. Yes, um, you know, we have, we're, we're, we're really back to pre-COVID sales levels. And in fact, just recently we had to hire a, a couple staff members. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And the bulk of the staff members are JetCon. Is it in like a sales team or, as we mentioned, mechanics, technicians? Where, where do you find the, the concentration? Sales and servicing. The, 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 the technicians. Technicians. And how do you find, like, how do you get your customers? Is it a lot of cold calling, marketing, or do you find your brand is strong where people just come, come to JetCon? Um, our brand is pretty strong. We use a lot of social media. Uh, we find, we find um, social media works very well these days in terms of getting, getting customers here, getting customers to us. Um, but, but, you know, that's it basically. Okay. And yeah. what's, what's your USP? Like, what's a unique selling position? Why, why does someone come to JetCon versus other competitors or buy a new car? You know, why does someone come to JetCon on a Monday morning? A, a lot of our customers say, hey, they... You know, they, they know us very well. We have been around a long time. They trust us. It's, 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 you know, it's an industry where, where you know, the trust level is, a, is relatively low. Mm -hmm. and, and, you know, in, in that regard, we, we tend to stand out among, okay. among the crowd, yes. Do you, when, when you buy a used car from Jetcon, you know, mm -hmm. whatever year it could be, you know, mm -hmm. 2017, 16, etc. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you get like a warranty oh, or a yeah. certification or how does it work? C certainly. Um, you know, first of all, we, we service all our cars. We we, um, we we test them. We we put them through a, a quality control uh, process, and yes, we have a we have a warranty. Really? Mm -hmm. And when you say service, like if you buy a car, could you actually get like a year free service or a six month free service, mm -hmm. or do you get any of those kind of no, you know no, fan add dangles attached no. or add ons? <laughs> yeah. No, we don't we, we, we don't we don't offer that at, at this point in time. So it's it's at a cost if you come it, if you come right. back post purchase. Certainly, certainly. Okay. And, and what's your inventory like? I mean, you know, we, we see your balance sheet. It's a public <laughs> company, but, you know, at any one point, like how many cars do you, do you keep? Well, we, we, have, we have a pretty large inventory. Um, I mean, right now we probably have about four or 500 cars. Whoa. Mm -hmm. At any <laughs> one snapshot time, mm -hmm. four or 500 cars? Yes. Okay. And do you find that's one of the keys to the business is, you know, especially now with the supply chain disruptions globally, it's boils down to inventory, inventory? Inventory is, is very important, but also variety. Um, you know, again, you know, in in, 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 our, in our business, we sell a wide range of cars. You know, compared to a, a new car dealer who would probably sell, would sell, let's say, one brand with three or four or five models. Mm -hmm. We sell a pretty, pretty wide range. You know, all the Japanese brands, um, and and several cars within each within each brand. So, we 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 have to have a, a an inventory to support that. Um, you know, furthermore, it, it, you know, it takes the lead time between ordering and receiving a car here is somewhere in the region of about three months. Okay. 
And right, so. what's uh, do you find each year the hot selling car might change, or you know the make, the type, or is it pretty consistent in Jamaica? Um, it changes, it changes, but, um, but you also have different car cars that fit in different um, segments, mm -hmm. and, and what 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 has happened to us over the years that we have had to shift our, our focus from okay. time to time. So COVID, for example, has, has um, prompted us to shift a, a lot of our and, focus. And explain that. Is shift with, say, I don't know, cheaper cars or shift to different makes or what, what do you mean by that? Okay, so, so um, th there are some of the cheaper cars that we, we took a decision earlier. Low, low margin cheaper cars that we just took a decision or pre-COVID not, not to carry. Oh, not to carry? Not okay. to carry, primarily because of the the, the, the the margins, but once we got into COVID, you know, and you know, we had to literally reset, reset the clock, mm -hmm. and and you know, we took a decision to start carrying some of those low so mar lower margin cars. So if I, during COVID, the lower price cars the lower move price better, cars move much faster. Yes. Okay. Yes. And that's just due to, I mean, normal economic cycle, lower spending power, stuff like that. That, those type of things? That, that's a part of, of, of it, but also, you know, those cars would, even pre-COVID, would have been fast sellers as well. Yeah. Just that we had to take that decision not to, not, not to carry those. So if we, if we look at last year, what was the hot selling car from a JetCon standpoint? What was, the, what was your number one vehicle? <laughs> now, last year or, or f and this year, our fastest selling cars have been, you know, Toyotas, uh, Toyota um, Corollas, Axios, Pro Boxes. Um, so, so the Toyota line overall? Subarus. You know, we, we, we have done a lot of Subarus. Really? A lot. Um, we, have lot we have done a lot of Mazdas. Yes. <laughs> which, was, which was never really a and, popular car in Jamaica. And those are, kind of, those are like your main line. So Toyotas, yes. Subarus, yes. Mazdas. Yes. That's what JetCon is known for. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And any, any like future plans, like expansion plans that you're looking to do? Or where the business is now, where you're located, you know, the lines you're carrying, that's JetCon today and JetCon for the future? Um, you know, we're, we're, we're watching the, the whole car industry. The whole car industry right now is in, is in almost in turmoil mm -hmm. uh, for, for, for a number of reasons. The, you know, the, the, the supply chain disruptions, you know, the chip shortage, mm -hmm. and of course the transition to electric cars. Um, so, so, you know, the whole industry is, in, is, in, is, is being disrupted. And, and when Seriously you, disrupted and, right and, now. And when you say that, but being specific, when you say turmoil, is, is a main thing that, you know, some, sometimes persons in the U.S. say they order a car today, it's taken six, nine months. Is, is it really the supply chain is a turmoil oh. comment being specific, Andrew? That, that is a part of it, but the main thing is the transition to electric. Mm -hmm. um, as, as you know, the car industry over the past hundred years have been dominated by about ten manufacturers. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, but suddenly there's this new manufacturer on the market called Tesla, mm -hmm. who is now the, who is now the the most valuable car company out there. But so let, let's say we agree with you, you know, from yes. a stock market standpoint. But yes. in Jamaica, we don't really see any too much EVs yet. So, yeah, so how, what, is, what how is that putting the market into turmoil? What terminals? happens in, in North America happens in Jamaica, you know, a couple of years later. You know, we, we, we tend to track what goes on in North America very closely. So, so do you think you'll start to see a lot of Teslas on Jamaican roads or just ele electric we're vehicles gonna, overall? You know, we're going to be seeing a lot of electric vehicles on Jamaican roads. Um, I, I believe that what the market is waiting for is the government to, to make up their minds as to how... Like, like the, cost, the cost structure? The government is supposed to introduce uh, or has... has um, promise to introduce incentives for electric vehicles. Everywhere in the world where electric vehicles have become popular, there have been in incentives for persons to shift their focus from gasoline to electric. It's, it's, not, a, it's not an easy mental hmm. shift. And when you say incentives, you mean just like a lower duty structure? Lower duty structure. They have, they, okay. have, they, they have indicated that the duties on electric vehicles will be reduced to 10%. 10% uh, duty, zero GCT. So it encourages the public to, yes. I mean, for, I don't want to say take risks, time, but, but you know, of purchase an EV vehicle. Right. Yeah. You know, electric vehicles have a number of advantages over gasoline-powered vehicles, right? Number one, a, a, an electric motor is, is extremely simple compared to a gasoline engine. A gasoline engine is very complicated. Mm -hmm. A gas engine has probably about 20,000 parts mm -hmm. compared to a, a, an electric motor with probably about 20. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, um, 
the efficiency of an electric, electric powered car is significantly higher than a gasoline powered car. You know, a gas, a gas engine at best is probably about 20% efficiency, 20% thermal efficiency. That's the amount of energy that is present in the fuel that you actually get to the wheels, about 20% at best. And, okay. and Andrew, on that point, to tell us something. Mm -hmm. You know, and we get this question on business extra a lot, actually, right. um, or just coming into us. Right. So all of these like, like charging stations that were randomly seen at gas stations or right. across Jamaica, right. this can charge any of these electric vehicle cars? Is, is can, that how it works? They can charge any car. Yes. And is there? Is, but, do, you but, pay, but, do you have to pay money when you go charge the car? Y yes. You, you, do. you use your charge card. Is that their, so use a debit card or a credit card? Um, I, I think most of them are set up to use their, the, the charging companies are, would have their... Their own respective their, things. Their own cards. But don't worry okay. about the charging stations too much. But there's a, there's a science behind it then? Mm. There's a science behind it. But the people who are going into the charging station, what they are looking at right now, they're looking down the road. Okay. Because right now there are probably no more than about 50 electric cars in Jamaica. But okay. they're probably, they're way over 100 charging stations. <laughs> so they're just building out a network they're building for out a network the future. Because they realize that in another 10 years, five to 10 years, that is going to be the, the electric cars are going to dominate the market. The norm. is going to be the norm. But bear in mind that even without a charging net, a, a good charging network, um, electric cars are mostly charged at home. Electric cars are treated essentially like your cell phone. So while you're sleeping, you just plug, you in plug your it car. in at night and it charges, right? right? Uh, or, or you plug it in at the office and it, and it charges. If you, you if you if you have a solar system, you can literally be charging it for free, right? Right. But apart from all this, what I'm saying, what I, what I'm saying is that electric cars are significantly more efficient. We, we're talking about 20 Wait. percent for a gasoline car. For electric cars, are probably over 60 percent right. efficiency. We're going to come back to it because it's a very important point you're making. <laughs> And I can tell you're very passionate about it. I am very passionate <laughs> about it. We take another break on Business Live Extra. More when we return. Welcome back to Business Live Extra. JetCon's third quarter, September 30th, 2021, revenue saw an improvement to 196 million Jamaican versus 153 million Jamaican in the comparative period in 2020. Year-to-date nine months operating revenue for JetCon increased to Jamaican 606.9 million for 2021 versus 467 million for 2020, representing an increase of 30% year over year. This was due to the easing of the pandemic restrictions at that time of the financial results in their third quarter, 2021. Now, year to date, profit improved to Jamaican 11.5 million, more than doubling year over year. Still with us is Andrew Jackson, Managing Director of Jetcon Corporation Limited. <laughs> Andrew, welcome back. Thank you. you know, it's been great talking to you, and I can tell you're passionate about the car business but you really love this whole EV. Um, I don't want to call it expedition, you know, you believe in it, but why do you believe in it so much for the next five to 10 years if we only have 50 of them or, or, or whatever the number is in Jamaica? The, the, wor <coughs> the, the world is changing. The world is going EV. There's, you know, there's a there, there's need to protect the environment. And as I said, it's, it's electric cars are significantly cleaner. So there's kind of an and ESG profile with this whole electric vehicle. Yes. Okay. Yes. Right. Um, it, it's, 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 it's the way to go. Um, you know, there, there has been a transition with, with hybrid cars. Hybrid cars are, again, significantly more efficient than, than straight gasoline-powered cars. Um, but there have, have always been a fear with electric cars of, you know, running out of charge, ra range an anxiety. Right. Right? You know, nobody wants to be driving down to Niggerland halfway through you run out of charge. And, you know, that, 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 has, that has been... In uh, some of the, so, so practically, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, you've mentioned you, mm -hmm. you actually sell some electric vehicles now, yes. like, a, like a Nissan Leaf yes. 2017 yes. or whatever year. Yeah. What's the range on one of those? If a Jamaican comes in, boom, buys that from Jetcon, 
how far can that go? What's the distance on that, approximately? The, the, the distance on a full charge for the, the newer model electric um, Nissan LEAF is, is about 250 kilometers. And are you seeing take up? I mean, are, are Jamaicans coming in and you know, taking very, a chance on buying it? Very slowly. Um, uh -huh. You know, most persons are actually waiting on the government um, incentives to kick in. Because they feel the price will go lower? The That's price, the, really, so it's like a 20% reduction in price. Well, what, what's the retail price on that now? What are, what are you selling that Nissan Leaf for now? Uh, it's about somewhere a bit, uh, around three and a half million. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Interesting. And, and, you know, taking a step back, I mean, does Jetcon offer financing? Internally or no? No, we don't. We 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 have, we have uh, partnerships with with the banks. Okay. We, we we leave the bank into the bankers. <laughs> so you, so you stick to your core business. You stick to our core business. Import sales yes. and so forth. Yes. And is is that something on the strategic horizon? You know, we've seen a lot of the new car dealers launch their own finance companies. You know, like you know Simpson Finance and right. You know it, some of the other other new car dealers. Is that something that has ever come across your board, your board level discussion to say, Andrew, we need to push into this and control our own destiny? It is something which we have discussed, but we haven't haven't gone there at all. You haven't gone there at all. No. Okay. No. Plans for the future S or sticking stick to our core business. Core business. Um, for now. All right. Mm -hmm. And and back to electric vehicle side. Mm -hmm. So you get two fifty kilometers, and mm -hmm. do you sell like that Nissan Leaf with a charger, or, yeah. or does, a, oh. does a customer have to buy a charger somewhere else? The, the, they come with a, they come in what is called a level one charger mm -hmm. that you can plug into your socket at home and charge the car overnight. And I mean, I'm sure you've run some studies or maybe your clients ask you, what's, what's the hit on the JPS bill? I mean, does the JPS bill go up astronomically or but is it still reasonable? The, the, the JPS bill will go up less than your fuel bill. Ah, than your fuel bill that's, would. A, that's a great answer. You're a salesman. <laughs> that's a good answer. Okay. Yeah, it's a, and, 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 and that's the key. As I said, it, it all boils down to efficiency. Mm -hmm. um, Gasoline, power, gasoline engines are notoriously inefficient. So, so, so in a nutshell, this whole EV market boils down to, so there's an ESG play, you know, environmental, there's a, you know, you're getting a, a decent amount of range, mm -hmm. and once this duty structure falls into place, it's going to be significantly less than a, call it a gas car or a diesel it, car. It, it, it will be less than a gasoline car, not, not, not now, but it will be, it, it, the, the gap will be reduced to, to make it less, to, to make the hurdle Heard of it, yeah. L l less of a problem. And, and where do you feel Andrew Jetcon fits into the market? We're, we're seeing a lot of announcements. We're yeah. not seeing the cars on the road yet, but we're seeing, you know, there's been a Tropical Battery, CAC 2000, both public companies mm -hmm. announced they're getting into the game. You know, we've seen some other public announcements by other companies. I mean, everybody's announcing that they're getting into this EV game. Mm -hmm. We're not seeing, it's, it's like real estate. Yeah, I know it's a project, but it's not breaking <laughs> ground yet. But, but where do you feel, how, how do you feel this all ends up? You feel everybody's gonna jump into the game and do it, or it's a lot of hype? A, a lot of people are gonna be jumping into the game. Again, you know, you just need to look at what's happening in, 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 in North America and Europe. It's eventually gonna happen here, right? L let me tell you, in another 10, year, 10 years time, Probably none of the car manufacturers will be making gasoline engines anymore. That, that's your outlook. Yes, yeah. um, gasoline engines is 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 on the chopping block. It's really? Going. Okay. Yes. I, I mean, you'll still have exotic cars. You'll still have you know the, the nostalgic, the, you know the nostalgic thing going. But generally speaking, in terms of the mass market, it is going. Okay. It is going electric. So how do you? I mean, how do you balance that? You know, do you do you think? the EV will cannibalize your core business or you're going to have to just balance, you know, kind of these new sales into the EV market with your existing gas car sales. How, how do you balance that as a managing director? We, we, you know, we have to transition. We have to transition. Um, again, you know, it's going to take time. There, there's always, hesi you know, some hesitancy in terms of ac accepting the new, the new technology, mm -hmm. which is the reason why the incentives are, are always necessary. Um, and, and, and the incentives are good, you know, because it, the, the benefits of these cars are is, 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 is far yeah. Um But it's going to take time. Yeah. It's going to take time. But it's, it's coming. It's coming. Absolutely. And, and, no, and, a, and, and a, we are there. Yeah. So you have your strategy. You have that transition plan. Mm -hmm. You have your outlook there. That's great. Now your market cap, your market cap of the company. Um, mm -hmm. You went public 2016. Right. Roughly a billion Jamaican roughly now. Roughly a billion, yeah. Stock price, $1.70, $1.80. Mm -hmm. You're on a rebound. We're, we're, um, we're on the rebound. You're getting back to the pre-pandemic 2019. Yes. Your shareholders are a bit more happy now. I, I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you, you made some profit, which is good. Yes. Um, uh, and, and as you mentioned, you have big inventory. So you have a big 
you know, asset base there, you know, mm -hmm. four or 500 cars. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, in a way, when you're at your annual general meeting, how do you explain, you know, what JetCon does and is, <laughs> you know, because it's, uh, as you said, you're the only one. We're, 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 we're the only one. Um, how, how do you explain it so you're not in no it's, man's land? It's, you know, it's, it's lonely. <laughs> well, there you go, you know. Um, but, but, you know, I mean, I'm still addressed into this business of being public and, and on annual general meetings and annual reports and all that stuff. You know, as, as, as you can imagine, that's not really my, my um, first love. My mm -hmm. first love is technology. Okay. Um, you know, um, give me the car. I'll work on the car. I'll, I'll you know, and, and, I have, and I have a tremendous passion for electric cars, let me tell you. Um, you know, the, the simplicity, the efficiency, the acceleration. This man, if you drive a... If you, if you drive an electric car, a, a good electric car, and then you feel that acceleration, you know, going uphill, going, you know, around the corners, you don't want to go back to a gasoline-powered car. Okay. Yeah. The, 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 the batteries in the car is, is the batteries is really car, mm -hmm. right? Um, the, 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 the whole, the, the, one of the reasons why the electric cars are so expensive is because of the price of the batteries, right? Okay. Batteries, are, batteries are very expensive. Um, they use lithium, which is a fairly uh, rare uh, metal. Um, um, and the batteries are very heavy. But the nice thing about it with the, with, the, with the car, you can, you know, you put those batteries at the bottom of the car, which means your center of gravity is very low. So you can imagine how that car handles handles around, around the just, corners. It sounds like you got Vernon feel already, right? you know? It sounds like you got, you got the racetrack. An okay? electric motor produces maximum torque from zero RPM. Mm -hmm. You know, from, from you press that pedal, you have maximum power, you have maximum torque. A gasoline powered engine, you have to rev up to about three or 4,000 RPM before you start to see your maximum power, your maximum torque. Mm -hmm. So, so um, hey, hey, I, I love electric cars. <laughs> and, and so with that said, and, and getting you back to center though, I mean, yes. how do you, you, you know, how, how do you feel about getting back to your 2019, 2018 results? You yeah. know, and, and, and I guess the whole, co the whole key to the business, you gotta keep spinning these inventories, right? Right. Uh, to right. generate the profits and you right. know, the revenues where you were. Right. What, what's kind of the game plan there for the rest of you know, this year and fiscal 2022? Our, our plan right now is to, is to get our volumes up, right? We think profit will come down the road. We, we don't see any significant profit over the next year or two okay but we believe that if we can get so those so the margins are up, the margins are kind of compressed right the margins are definitely and they may compressed. stay compressed for a while and they, they are likely to stay compressed for a while okay um but but our our our, our, our plan right now is to gain gain market share and, and it's an important question we're going to come to it i mean so is there anything else that you really feel jetcon should be you know you you kind of said okay not the finance you want to stick to the core business that's for the banks the credit unions mm -hmm. You know, you're doing the servicing, you're doing a few other things. Mm -hmm. But really, should a JetCon brand be diversifying? Or find something else to, to give shareholders some, some potential <laughs> alpha? Right. And, and, and again, um, electric vehicles actually put us in an interesting position. Maybe wider to margins. Provide, to diversify wider margin, but also the, the whole business of the energy to, to power these vehicles. Um, but let me tell you, the, mar the market that we're in is, a, is a, you know, we have a very small share of that market. Um, and, and, you know, we have always felt that, you know, we ought to have a much, much larger s s slice of the pie. Would you acquire another used car dealer or that, that kind of doesn't make sense because <coughs> it's better to just grow organically? I, you know, we have always thought it's better to grow organically. Understood. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to come back to that point. <laughs> okay. We take another break on Business Live Extra. More with Managing Director of JetCon, Andrew Jackson, when we return. Welcome back to Business Live Extra. JetCon specializes in used motor vehicles. With a growing interest in electric and hybrid vehicles, their next frontier is the electric vehicle market. The EV market is projected to grow 12% of auto sales cars globally by 2030. Electric vehicles come in three main types, hybrid electric or HEV, plug-in hybrid, 
PHEV and battery electric BEV. How best will Jetcon navigate the EV market in Jamaica? What else is on the horizon for Jetcon? We find out more from Andrew Jackson, Managing Director of Jetcon Corporation Limited, who joins us for a final time. Andrew, welcome back. Thank you again. The passionate <laughs> car guy, you know, yes. in Jamaica. It's, yes. it's, it's great, great getting to know you, you know, for the first time. And, you know, just talking about that, your background, you know, you went to university, you went to UWE, mm -hmm. um, yes. did a bit of engineering, you know, yes. a few other things and Dublin stuff. Mm -hmm. And you're from Cambridge, St. James. That's correct. And again, I always like to talk about how did you get the light bulb to get into this whole kind of entrepreneurial side? And, and where did you kind of start off? You know, where, where was your first job? Let, 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 me, let, me, let me tell you. Uh, well, my first job was, at, was actually at JBC. So you're in media. Uh, I was an engineer in a JVC. Were you a journalist or? <laughs> an engineer. Okay. You were an uh, anchor news guy. I, I used to lecture at, at CAS, which is now UTEC. Okay. All right. I used to work at the, the, the telephone company, which is now um, cable and wireless or flow. I guess flow. Yes. Um, don't forget, don't forget lime. Yes, and lime. Yeah, okay. <laughs> I used to work at NCR. Um, yeah. and, and, you know, the training from these companies was, was I found to be very, very valuable. What's the most important thing you learned along the way? The most important thing I worked on, I learned along the way to be consistent, to be, to be honest, to be, to be, um, to stick to it, even when stick things are, even when things are rough. Rough. Mm -hmm. Any, any major obstacles? You know, something that you, you just almost gave up on. Any big, big failures or along the, that kind of <laughs> career path that. You said, boy, Jetcon almost never happened? Um, almost gave up, uh, I would say, about twice during the, during the um, financial meltdown in the 90s. Okay. And again, during the, the crash in the, I think it was about 2007, 2008, that, that, about that Yeah, time. 2007, the, yeah. the US meltdown, the yes. financial crisis. Yes. Okay. Uh, I, I mean, I remember is literally purchasing cars from Japan when the yen was worth 130, 34 or so. And within a week or two, it, it, it went to like 1976. Wow. Within a, within a, within a very short, short period of time. So the cars we purchased, suddenly the price, the price in US dollars went up like, like crazy. Um, and, and, you know, but we, but we, 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 you know, we stuck it, we, we stuck with it and, and we, Quite happy for it. And, and we're, we're, interestingly, all of those experiences actually helped us during during COVID. And you know, we, we, we navigated COVID pretty 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 well. I mean, I think we're in a really good position to to, to, to deal with COVID. Because you've you've been through one or two crises, so we've been we've been through and, crises. And what did they kind of teach you, or or you know, what how did you get through COVID? Was it just by holding cash and being calm, or what did you really deploy? in COVID that, you know, maybe the management discussion analysis, you know, the AGM, you can't really see by just looking at the financial statements unless you talk to Andrew. Uh, you know, when COVID hit, we, we, we had inventory. We had a, you know, a, a decent inventory. Sales went down, but then it, it rebounded. And, you know, we, we literally took a decision that, look, we're going to, we're going to focus, we, you know, we're going to st stop purchasing and cut our, cut our margins. We just want to keep sales, keep the cars moving through the through, through the gate, right? And and it has worked. It has worked um, pretty well. Um, we, we, we cut our margins. We cut our inventory. Did, did you actually start selling some cars like at just cost or just over we, cost? Oh, we started just selling say, quite a lot of cars at cost. Yes. Did. Okay. Yes. Just to just did, to did it get, get, get as? I mean, did you have to get as? Did it get as bad or did you have to get as shrewd as saying offer even a vendor note on some cars or you'd never do no, that? No, no, no. We, we never done that. Never done that. Okay. But, but, but it got really bad. I mean, our sales dropped like 70%. Wow. Well, <laughs> during some of that, some of those yes, quarters or yes, during that yes, spell. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. You know, so but, you're, but you're back now. But we're, yeah. we're back. We're back. And, and Andrew, walk me through like, let's say, let's say legacy planning, succession planning. You mm -hmm. know, succession planning, corporate governance, such an important point. Just mm -hmm. like ESG. Mm -hmm. I mean, do you have... What's the next tier of management below you? Do, you? do you have any children in the company today or is it just independent management? You know, what, what's, a, what's a day like at Jetcon for, 
you know, for, for minority shareholders who are saying they want to be in Jetcon for the next 30 years? I have two children in the business. You do? Okay. Yeah, two, two sons. Um, I have a daughter who was in the business. Um, and, they, and they literally grew up in the business, I must tell you. They, you know, they have been involved from they were about five or six years old. Okay. Right? And they used to hang out there at first. And, and, and um, you know, summer holidays and weekends. Yes, yes. And of course, mo again, motor racing. They were always involved in motor racing. And that kind of tied them, tied them to the business from a, from a very, very early age. So, so um, I, I mean, so you know, we have been fortunate to to have, to have, to have these kids, in, involved from a very very what, um, young age. You know, are they in executive roles or they're, they're in executive managers? Roles, yes. Okay. Like, yeah. what do they do in the company like uh, today? So, uh, one of my sons is in is in um, is in logistics. Okay. You know, the, the purchase, essentially doing everything from. Getting the cars. Oh, procurement. Like every Pro from procurement all the way through to delivery. The, the okay. logistics of getting all of that done. And, and, the, the, and another son is involved in, in, in parts and servicing. Okay. Yeah. So, so two, two, and critical, said, two critical divisions. Yes. And, you know, and they, have known, they have been involved in this business for a very long time. So they know the business. They have grown, literally grown up in the business. And is, and is one of them kind of on course to become managing director at some point? Or is that not... Is that not really a, a you know a board we, matter yet? That's not a matter yet, but we we'll see how that goes. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. But but it's a it's a topic, I'm sure. Does it come up at annual journal meetings now, or or not we're, necessarily? We have we have really never we're never discussed it. Okay. But but, um, but I'm sure we all think about it. Okay. No, great. <laughs> and and what's your you know what's your three year five year outlook for Jetcon? I mean, I'm just talking about growth again, getting getting towards pre-pandemic revenues or surpassing that, you know, maybe getting to two billion in revenues one day or three billion, besides the EV market, is there, if you don't want to acquire other used car dealers, um, maybe not venture into financing, but is there anything else on the horizon that you feel can really add on some, some market share or revenue to the company? Um, you know, again, as I said, you know, we're, we're looking at organic growth. There are some specific projects that we are looking at. Can't, can't say very much about them right now. Sure. Um, we don't want to get into trouble with the stock yeah. exchange, you know? <laughs> but but we're definitely you know looking at at growing the business over the next um, couple of years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know we 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 have the we have most of the elements in place already. Most of the docks are lined up. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. Who who do you who are like your top I don't know three competitors or who 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 is a who is a Jetcon competitor know that you know if. Uh, if one of your original customers' kids doesn't come to Jetcon, <laughs> what, what lot are they going to in Kingston? Um, you know, or, or being competitors, um, um, wheels and wheels, auto. Um, okay. Um, I'm try, trying to think of them. Uh, um, um, Crichton, auto, a, a, a couple. But those, th that, that, those are the ones that kind of stand out. That stands out right now. And, and has there been consolidation, Andrew? In the used car market overall, or? not really, not really. Again, it's a it's a very fragmented. It's kind of a market. market. If somebody closes, as always, a new guy opening up. Is yes, that kind of what it's yes, like. Yes, yes. It, it's it's a, again, it's a, you know, it's a very interesting market. Um, it's one of those businesses that, you know, you can operate at a very small level, at a micro level, and survive. Mm -hmm. Right, and and there are a lot of. Lots of small, like sole traders players. or yes. those type of yeah. players lot, out there. A lot, as a well. Lot. Yes, a lot, a lot. And and I mean, would more equity capital help you, or, you, or in your mind, you don't need more equity capital? Like, would you would you look at the market for a rights issue or an APO, you know, to be able to grow your inventory more, given your slow inventory turn, or uh, you know, that's not something that's on the horizon. It's 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 not on the horizon, but it's something that is 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 quite possible. Yeah. And is, is there value, Andrew? I mean, have you ever had like a, another, call it lot or office in Western Jamaica? Again, um, something that we have discussed a lot. Okay. <laughs> but, but right now, Jetcon is just primarily Kingston. Jetcon is, is, is Kingston. You know, we have, we have, we actually have a number of locations in Kingston where we do different things. Okay. So, for you example, we have, a, we, have a, we, have a, we have a lot on the free zone, in the free zone. Mm -hmm. um, so all our cars that we import comes in through the free zone. 
Gotcha. Which, which, which again, you know, part of our strategy to, to, to make a lot of things a lot easier. Yeah. <laughs> and, and even if it's not branded JetCon, yes. do you have like any joint ventures or partnerships in Mandeville or Mumbai no. where no. No. somebody just buys from you? No, we have, we have stayed away from that. You've stayed away from that model yes. as well? Yes. Okay. So it's either JetCon or, or just there's no partnership? Um, for, for no. Okay. So no. I mean, I mean, you know, things can change in the future. As, as I said, you know, the whole market is being disrupted, and you know, anything can happen. Excellent. Right. But but that's not on the table right and, now. And and anything in the and there's nothing in the Caribbean at this point. I mean, are you approached defined by other islands like you know Cayman or where there might be a, a you know a lot of Jamaican Jamaicans that reside there that are actually saying they want cars. Again, they want affordable cars. Something we have looked at in the, in the past, but um, you know we we hadn't successfully executed it but, but we did we actually did look at it in a very serious way a couple of years but not ago. executed as yet right um and you know and and covid you know uh, you know it kind of had you just hunker down for a while covid covid made it made realize that it was a good decision not to go that route <laughs> to, to spread your wings too much <laughs> to spread our wings too much yeah right. and you know the other thing we, we, we tend to see kind of in the market you know mm -hmm. is like a lot of these rental car companies you know, dabbling with car dealers or vice versa. You know, mm -hmm. we've seen the kind of Uber play here. Mm -hmm. are, are you tending to, are you getting hit up by a lot of these kind of market players to form partnerships or, no. or not as much? No, no. Okay. No, not, not at all. Okay. Uh, where, you where know, they, we, they, we have had proposals in the past, but. Where they could use your cars that are dormant to go and do other things, but I know it no, would increase your no, risk and your insurance. No, no, no. But no, you're, no. Not, you're not seeing that no. at, your, at your office. We're, we're not seeing it and we definitely wouldn't want to go that route either. You're sticking to your core. We're, we're sticking with the core. Great. Andrew, it's been a pleasure having you. Thank you so very much. Thank you and JetCon for joining us on Business of Extra. Thank, thank you very much. And I had no idea you're so passionate about cars. I am very this passionate. Great. It explains a lot. Yeah. Yes. Thank you so much. You are most welcome. That's it for another edition of Business Live Extra. Remember, success is a series of small wins. We've been talking with Andrew Jackson, Managing Director of JetCon Corporation Limited. Don't forget, you can watch us online at cvm.com forward slash videos forward slash Business Live Extra. Thanks for joining us.